So this episode is really special to me. It is one year since I started the podcast, and I just want to kind of unpack some of my thoughts about podcasting, some of my favorite episodes, and, and what I've learned over this year. Stay tuned. You are listening to The Leadersmith, Darren Gertis. Okay, so as I said, it's been one year since I started the podcast. Actually, um, so I started it the Monday after graduation, and today is Saturday, the, one year later. So it would have been Sunday, and then Monday I would have started. So that's that's a time frame. I have a hundred. This is my hundred and sixty fifth episode, and the reason that there's so many is I decided early on I'm just going to work all summer, five days a week making this happen. And I I thought, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Um, There's no downside here. And I said this, I spelled this all out in my first episode. There's no downside. As long as I can keep doing it, so what? There's nobody going to tap me on the shoulder and say, sorry, uh, nobody's listening to you. You you must go now. Um, But I did that. And then when I got to the major semester, I reduced to three and ultimately to two, which I think is a good rhythm, um, two episodes per week. And, uh, and, and I love it. I mean, it's, it was a really good decision. Uh, the format of my show has always been intentionally to be short. So I'm thinking about the guy that's going to listen to it, maybe in the car on the way to work, or just wants to have a bite size, something, some ahas to snack on mentally. And, uh, so I try to keep it no less than about 10 minutes and no more than about a half hour, although I violated that once or twice. Um, and I, when I looked at the format, I thought, well, you know, I speak for a living. I'm a professor, right? So, um, I can do monologues. That's fine. And maybe I'll do some interviews somewhere along the way. And and as I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to do more interviews as we move forward. And the reason for that is this, I want to spend more time learning from other people, not just learning and preparing on my own to talk about it, but just to, to get the ahas myself. So that's probably going to be a shift as we move forward. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking, wow, it's it's really interesting where where I started and where I am now. And when, again, when I designed the, the podcast, I thought, hey, some of these episodes will intentionally be used in class. So that's killing two birds with one stone. Some of these episodes will be geared for a business networking association, great business networking here in Charleston. Uh, I've been writing educational pieces for them for like five years, four or five years. Um, And when COVID hit, everything changed. They shut everything down and eventually they went to Zoom. And when they went to Zoom, I said, hey, well, you know, I'm already doing this podcast and I do it. I record it with video and then I put that on YouTube and I put it on audio as well because that's how most people listen to to podcasts. So they use the video and watch the podcast and I, I'm very careful to make sure that it's speaking to that small business audience with those episodes. Uh, so I'm killing two birds with a stone there. And again, I'm doing all these things that are going to make me a better professor uh, along the way. So it's not like I'm I'm stretching out and doing dance and art and whatever. No, I'm, I'm doing things that are going to hopefully give me a multiplicative effect in what I'm already doing. Um, I tried things, some things worked better than others and some were just fun. Like Twitter Tuesday, I'd go out into Twitter, look at hashtags about leadership and just look for leadership quotes. And I had fun doing that. Um, some people liked it. Some people didn't. Okay. It was interesting. I also did a, a series of episodes on, uh, you know, read to lead where I reviewed books or notable quotables where I looked at one author's quotations and just talked about those. And that was a lot of fun as well. I got to process things like other people didn't though, like processing George Floyd and, and what is racism? What is anti-racism? What is where, you know, where should the line be for dialogue and freedom of speech and those kind of things and the shutdown and zoom research on zoom fatigue. When I'm preparing to talk about this on the podcast, it's very similar because sometimes I'll outline things, but it's very similar to the writing process. And as a professor, I'm well aware of this, right? The way that you write is the way that you think. The clarity that you bring to writing is the clarity in your thinking. And this has helped me in significant ways to clarify my thinking. 
And beyond that, the monologue is just therapeutic. I mean, just having to learn and prepare and getting to say whatever I want to say. Like, I have a very distinct point of view. I'm a Christian. I'm a conservative. I'm a professor, a, a management professor. I, I, Everything that we talk about is about leadership, but it could be about business leadership or what's going on in society or what's going on politically or uh, within Christianity or whatever else. Uh, but, you know, I have a point of view and I it's just therapeutic. I don't know how to say it any better than that to to work through this. Um, in the future, again, I, I'm probably going to spend more time on uh, interviewing other people because it's a new way to, you know, easily learn more. And I think that's, that's kind of a direction that I'll see more of. I'll, I'll still do my own monologues as well, but I think that I'm going to move that direction. Now, podcasting has been a bit different than what I thought. When I set out to do this, I thought it would be easier to um, connect with my audience and and, you know, have more numbers and things along those lines. But you don't know what you don't know when you start a thing. And that's good. I mean, that, that optimism keeps people in the game until they can be successful. But for example, I thought I'd have more listeners. And I actually mapped out a, a geometrical progression of listeners. It doesn't work that way, apparently. It, t- it takes a while. It takes longer to build. I mean, and I have respectable results for someone that's been one year into podcasting. I mean, I, I've compared this and it's it's decent. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I thought it was going to be like something different than what it was. And I thought that, I mean, once I mastered the technical side, which took a little while, and once I mastered that, that it would just, you know, wow, it's going to blossom. It takes some time and it, it's good to get into it and do it and feel it and experience it. And I wouldn't trade the hard times. Um, and I, I, you, sometimes we try to avoid hardship or hard times or, or the difficulty of doing things. But I wouldn't trade that because when you when you do a new venture, and this is like a, a small scale entrepreneurial venture, right? When you do that, your problems will emerge and you'll see them come right in front of you when at the time where you're going to run into them. You can't necessarily predict them and that's okay. But then when you overcome those problems, you you literally in Jim Rohn's kind of thinking become more, you grow and you stretch. And I think this is a great exercise. So I learned a lot uh, that I didn't know about how to reach people. I learned that you can monetize and you don't have to monetize with advertisements, although you can if you have a large enough audience and you can monetize with uh, Patreon. You can you can monetize in ways that aren't even monetizing. Like the, the benefits that have come to me through this have been remarkable. Um, I have had opportunities because I had a podcast. I've met fascinating people because I had the podcast and could invite them on the show. Doors open to me that would not have opened otherwise. Um, I'm working with uh, the uh, uh, Excellence and in Leadership Institute, coaching and consulting because of the podcast. Uh, the podcast led me to open up a Facebook group that you know we just talk about leadership issues stuff and I did one on I just created one on LinkedIn as well and so we can just have these interesting conversations and the podcast was the impetus for all of those things so it led to some really interesting opportunities and it's fascinating that like I'm a, I'm a tenured management professor I, I don't need to do other stuff but in doing this like you, oh you have a podcast oh well now you're interesting wait a minute I have tenure I mean it's it's just a remarkable thing to my mind like anybody can open up set up a pod, podcast but it took me like years of study to get my PhD and then years more to get tenure but you have a podcast wow now you're interesting so it's 2021 <laughs> and somehow that's a cool thing um and so speaking of 2021 the bar has lowered and what i mean by that is It's a positive thing for you to go and make your mark and say what you want to say. Think about what happened in 2020. Um, The shutdown happens and the Daily Show and the Late Show, they're doing their shows from home. Like you can too. So that was really comforting because I'm in my home office and every episode that I've shot has been here in my home office. 
And yeah, I have to keep the, the kids quiet, send them outside or, you know, hey, look, I'm going to be recording something. So you need to be quiet for a little while, but you can work at home. And if somebody screams in the background periodically, like a little kid, I don't mean like murder victim. If a kid screams in the background, okay, we're okay with that because the bar has lowered, which allows us to be more relaxed. And like, I don't have to be in a professional studio. So you can go and do exactly what I've done over the last year. Um, COVID has just been, it's been a, if there's a silver lining, it's that it's done this with technology amplifying or allowing us to make headway at working at home or allowing us to have, feel free to be working at home and not everything being perfect. Like I, you know, I have a, a microphone here that has pretty good sound and I keep it generally just out of the screen because it feels weird to have a microphone in front of me, um, as I'm talking like I, I, I don't see like my identity is not I am the announcer, right? It's not that. So I keep it just out of the screen. And I just talk to my audience. Um, but I have a good microphone uh, trying to make it a, a pleasurable experience for the audience, not or at least not a painful experience to hear, you know, bad audio. Um, but we also recognize that it doesn't matter. I mean, it's going to be imperfect and that's okay. And that's what I want to let you, um, I, I want to instill in you. I want to let you walk away from this with, you can go do this kind of thing. It's okay. You, if you have any kind of message, anything that you want to say at all, um, you can set up shop and it doesn't cost hardly anything or at least to get started. It doesn't cost it. It depends on how many bells and whistles you want to add to it. And you don't have to add very many at all. Um, and if you keep your episode short, it can be like dirt cheap or nothing. At any rate, I, I just wanted to relate that. And I also wanted to talk about some of my favorite episodes. And there's a reason for that, because in doing that, you'll get more of the nuance of what I have gained, what I've learned in this process, because like, that's the topic here, like what I've learned from this year in podcasting. So the first one is actually the first one. By the way, before I get into that, let me talk about the order. This is not a top 10 countdown. This is chronological, but I will tell you which one is my favorite episode uh, as we discuss this. Okay, so the first episode is actually one of my favorites. I, I started on that first episode saying like, okay, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I'm new to podcasting. I'm a podcaster apparently now because I'm doing a first episode. And you have this weird uh, imposter syndrome when you start this thing. Like I'm calling myself a podcaster. Like, and, and I never actually wanted to be a podcaster. Like this was never like a dream. I have a daughter who loves Mark Rober. Like any video by Mark Rober, she can't wait to see. And she asked me periodically things like, Dad, when you were little, did you want to become a famous YouTuber? <laughs> no, we didn't have YouTube. Uh, we didn't even have the internet when I was little. So that's not a category in which I was thinking. So <laughs> podcasting, like I, I never set out to become a podcaster. Like this is not what I wanted to do. I set out to become a professor, which is what I am. But this is just something new to me. So at any rate, I loved the first episode because I was thinking along those lines. I was also thinking, what's the worst that can happen? Like, nobody's going to tap me on the shoulder and say, sorry, there's not enough people listening to you. I can do this as long as I can do this. I mean, as long as I want to do this. So episode one is one of my favorites. The next one that's one of my favorites is episode number four. It's the Hulk, Billy Graham, and why they matter if you're a leader. And it got very little play. Probably because the titles, people who like the Hulk probably don't like Billy Graham. People who like Billy Graham aren't really generally interested in the Hulk. But it's a really interesting episode. And I think the reason it didn't get a lot of play was because it was so early in the sequence. Like nobody knew anything about this. But I only had like 20 some odd listens of that episode. So if you're interested at all, go listen to that episode because I think it's really cool. Okay, the next one is actually not one, but a series of three connected episodes. So about middle of the summer, I guess it was June somewhere, after George Floyd and all the riots and all this stuff, I, I did this episode called I Need Some Encouraging Perspective. Now let me back up. I was on Facebook and I saw my friend Brian Miller. I know Brian for 25 some odd years now. 
Uh, we go back, we were teaching at Stonebridge School in Chesapeake, Virginia. I was teaching history, government, and economics. He was teaching Bible and Spanish. Uh, he went on to become a missionary in Colombia, and that was his plan all along, and he was going to go to, to uh, Colombia. And so uh, he went to Colombia to work with street children who were on drugs, boys that were on, on the street, had nowhere to go, and he'd get them into a safe home and, you know, help them get straight and get, you know, uh, on their feet again and take care of them. Well, years have gone by. He started a girl's home that folded. He started another one recently, and I saw him on Facebook uh, live streaming about how they were finishing this wing of the girl's home, and I thought, huh, that, that's really interesting. Maybe I can give him some publicity, and we can talk about it. And so I, I contacted him, and I said, hey, look, if you want to come on my podcast, and we'll talk about this and what you're doing, uh, other people can see it. And so we talked about it. So this is what I meant when I said earlier that like it, there were unexpected benefits um so a few weeks after those episodes shot 33 and 34 i i contacted him again and i said hey look i'm teaching an organizational change class i think there's a project here like uh now what he was doing was he was selling coffee from colombia colombian coffee is really good and he was selling that um, in order to fund his ministry, but he was sending it back with his missionaries that were coming for short-term missions trips. And then when COVID happened, it all shut down. So my class project in my organizational change class was how do we restructure a supply chain to make this work for him? And they did that. And then after that, we had an undergrad class, uh, organizational change class that got him a lot of publicity. He was in two newspaper articles, a, uh, the local TV station carried something about it. I mean, it, he got a lot of publicity because my students were working on that project. So it was like all these extra benefits that came through this means. So that was 33 and 34. And then 120 was kind of an aftermath of what happened with that. So if you want to listen to that, I would highly encourage it. Uh, 120 is called uh, Drink Coffee, Save Homeless Girls, in Medellin, Colombia. Okay, the next one that I thought was really interesting, one of my favorites was Think Like Trump, the businessman. And this was early on, somewhere in the summer. Um, and I was just, I was really thinking about how successful people think. And so I give, for example, I don't want to spoil the episode if you want to listen to it, but for example, when Mark Burnett came to Trump to talk about The Apprentice, and this was like a no-lose situation for Trump. They made Trump look larger than life. I mean, they probably made his political career happen because he was now on TV doing these things. Like, people knew who Trump was, but now he's, he's this big celebrity. All Trump had to do was show up, ad-lib for a little bit, and talk about how, did you do this? Did you do that? Okay, you're fired, right? And he did that. But... They highlighted his properties. They made him look huge. They paid him multi-millions of dollars just for a few minutes of his time. And it was just this amazing synergistic win for Trump. And I was trying to encourage you to think in these synergistic terms. And so it's one of my favorite episodes. I hope you listen to it. Okay, the next one is episode number 61. And um, this is how Stonebridge School teaches students to become leaders. This is a school I referenced before where Brian Miller and I taught, and I was speaking with my good friend Jeff Carlucci. Now, this is my podcast, so I figure, hey, why can't I talk to my friends, right? <laughs> these, these are in people that I uh, already have an established relationship with. Now, I talk to people that were strangers to me, too, and then we learn things. But Jeff is a godfather of my children, and he's a great guy. Uh, I think the world of them. And we were talking about our experience as we looked at how Stonebridge was really focused on students' character, how how to develop students' character. And, um, and so that was really interesting. And it, it, it's actually a pretty profound shift from how most people think about developing leaders. And uh, it was a great conversation. Number 69. Now, this is my number one favorite episode. So if you are listening to this right now and you want to say, okay, do I really want to continue listening to this guy? Go listen to episode 69, my new favorite leadership story. If you like that, you'll like other episodes. If you don't like that and you want to listen to Kardashians instead, fine, go, go do that. But this, I got it from a book that I was reading where I was like, whoa, that is such a fantastic explanation of what leadership is. By the way, that just gave me another thought. 
One of the things that happened along the way as I was podcasting was my kids started listening to the podcast. And and now that's incredible because I, when I started doing this, I was just trying to export my class to the wider world. Like, like the same kind of concepts that we were talking about in class, I'm trying to put it out to a broader audience. But I don't care nearly about you know how many people are hearing that as much as I do that my kids are absorbing the very best kinds of things that I would be teaching by listening voluntarily to this this podcast and so they do listen fairly regularly and um, this is one of my favorite stories my son and I were talking about this and, and he was like well I thought this was good leadership but wow that was really good leadership I can see the difference and, and we got to talk about that episode number 69 is my absolute favorite episode okay the next is a series it's uh, episodes 126 127 and 128 those were my Christmas episodes uh, where do Christmas traditions come from the 12 days of Christmas and the epiphany um, the hidden meaning of the 12 days of Christmas uh, the epiphany and the true meaning of Christmas so th those are the three episodes um, so the where traditions come from uh, it was essentially I read a book about Christmas traditions and I was like wow this is really interesting there's a lot of background like how Santa Claus um, evolved in our conscious imagination and uh, how, how we started to think differently about Christmas than maybe we would have a couple hundred years ago and that kind of thing 12 days of Christmas episode was like on the first day of Christmas my true love gave to me that song well there's a hidden meaning in that song and I unpack it and then epiphany is is an extension of these two episodes it's it's going to be fun every year where people will find it again and again and uh, it, it's it's great stuff i really enjoyed doing that one okay the next one is um episode 145 how to lead well at home and it's a, another conversation with my friend Jeff Carlucci. Uh, again, Jeff was the English teacher across the hall from me when I was teaching at Stonebridge School. And Jeff was, uh, now I was, I got married while I was at Stonebridge and Jeff was very much a mentor and a role model for me of how to think about how I should be leading my family. And I've learned a ton from him. This was a great episode. Uh, there's another lesson here as well. And this was one that I, I recorded a long time ago, but I just had in the can waiting for a rainy day or the right time to put it in. And when I just had too much on my plate, I plugged it right in that particular week. Uh, so 145, it really was you know, placed, uh, we recorded it months earlier. So if you're going to start a podcast, you want to think in terms of have a few episodes in the can so that when you're overwhelmed or sick or whatever, you can pop that in place and make it work because it's a perennial thing. I talk about current events a lot, but I also talk about perennial things that uh, are just evergreen. They're, they're episodes that will people will want to listen to whenever. Okay, so how to lead well at home. And again, the idea here is um, you know, why is it that people are successful at work, but their home lives are train wrecks? What's going on? And you have to be intentional about how you're leading at home. And he unpacks example after example. That's just, it's wonderful. So I highly recommend episode 145. Okay, next was uh, episode 146, 147, and 148. Now, this was a um, series, a small, you know, it chopped up from a larger lecture that came from um, Kenny Embry. Kenny Embry is a, a colleague of mine from the Southeast Case Research Association. I know that's kind of nerdy. I'm a past president. He is the current president. And um, we know each other from that. But he's a communications professor at St. Leo University. So Kenny is freaking brilliant. And uh, he came and gave a training um, uh, just an a hour and a half or so. That's why it's broken up into three episodes um, because I keep these short. So he came and gave a training for the Excellence in Leadership Institute, which I I was hosting the training and with uh, uh, my colleague David Hajar. And he came to speak. And I tell you, if you listen to this, you will never think about leadership and communication the same way again. He just has profound, uh, absolutely profound insight about how communication works and how you should be thinking about communication. So uh, episodes 146 to 148 are just brilliant. 
at that same training, the uh, the the it was a two day training that uh, we hosted for the for the uh, Excellence and in Leadership Institute. We also had Kirsten Ross Vogel uh, talk about how to handle fears, and this is episodes one fifty three to one fifty four. How to handle fears, and the reason we got there was because as we were talking with people about like what's what's the greatest obstacle keeping you from being successful, they would again and again and again talk about well fear. What kind of fears? Fears like uh, fears of in- feelings of inadequacy, or that I'm I'm just not good enough, or you know who am I to go and do X, Y, or Z? And she just dashed those fears. I mean, if you want to step into your calling. Um, but you're you're afraid of well what might happen or I'm not good enough or those kind of things. Uh, it turns out that those are almost always unfounded, and she will help you understand how to get there. I would highly recommend listening to those episodes as well. It's going to completely reframe the way that you think about success. Okay, and so that's that's all ten of the the, the top ten. Um, episodes or groupings of episodes. And so I I just want to unpack that. And and so even as I unpack that, so, uh, you know, starting the podcast led to creating this Facebook group, which led to uh, the Excellence and Leadership Institute, where I'm coaching and and, uh, offering trainings and, and things along those lines that I never would have stepped into had I not been part of or having the, the the podcast to begin with. It's open all kinds of opportunities. So am I glad that I did it? Yes. All the time that I have spent on this has not been wasted at all. It, it does take time, but I'm a better person. I'm a better professor. Like everything that I've done on this podcast, working through this week over week over week has been just ma- sharpening me. And I'm, a, I'm better in my classroom, in my primary vocation, because of the podcast. So it's not like it's taken my eye off the ball. I'm not like involved in art or dance or you know painting or something that has nothing to do with what I'm what I'm doing. I'm a management professor, and I speak about leadership episodes or leadership um, issues in each episode week over week. So I'm f- very glad that I did it. Should you do it? Now, that's another question. Some of you feel like you should be starting a blog or a podcast or something. Step into it. Don't be afraid. Go back and listen to Kirsten Ross Vogel, episodes 153 to 154. If if fear is holding you back from stepping into it, step into it. Um, two or three episodes back, I had Tim Woody on. Tim Woody was in that Facebook group that I was talking about, and he was uh, talking about how he wanted to become a podcaster. I said, hey, when you when you want to talk about it, um, let's talk about it. And then he showed up to, I, I had this uh, Saturday morning thing where I was going to, hey, let's talk about this leadership stuff. And he was the only one that showed up, right? Some things work, some things don't work so well. But he showed up, and so we got to talking, and, he, and I, we turned the conversation turned to uh, podcasting. I said, well, why am I not your first guest right now? Let's let's do this. So just let's start having a conversation. I'll rec- I'm recording it, and this will be your first episode. He is now 60 episodes deep since that point. So because he stepped into it, you can't just think about your goal. You have to actually take action, and he stepped into it. So um, yes, should you do it? If you have anything to say, yes. If you have anything that you want to learn step into it, become a podcaster, like start interviewing people that know something about what you want to learn. And they'll come on your podcast just because you have a podcast. Like I said, it's kind of kind of strange how that works, but they'll do that. Okay. So I always end every episode with two things. One is the quotation for contemplation for the day. And, um, that has been an awesome thing as well because it's given me access to all kinds of great quotes because I had to go search for them. Uh, and I have now a collection of these great quotes in PowerPoints where I can just grab them and slip them into my class presentations now. Uh, and it's sharpened my thinking because if I'm thinking about well, what's the topic I'm going to be talking about and then I search for the quotes that will match the topic, it just it just refines me. Um, But the quotation for contemplation for today comes from Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi is a uh, awesome coach of the uh, uh, Green Bay Packers from I think the 60s. And he said this, quote, the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. 
And that really resonated with me as I was thinking about what was going on here because I really have had to put in the work in order to do this. Now, this is a labor of love. I enjoy this. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> when I was talking to Jeff uh, Carlucci once, he said, uh, you, you know, this really sounds like you. I mean, it sounds like it's in your class. Well, duh, I'm not an actor. <laughs> I mean, this this is me. It's just, it's the same kind of thing as you would hear in my class, in my graduate program. Um, and so I'm talking about the same kinds of things. I love talking about these kinds of things. So, but it is work. I have to learn things that I didn't know that I would even have to learn. But those issues will emerge. They will present themselves as you're going along the way. So I have to put in the work. And if I put in the work, I get to success. And success looked different than what I thought it would look like, right? I mean, maybe I had these ideas like I was going to monetize or whatever. Mm, no, it's not anywhere. That, but I had even better things because it opened doors to people that I never would have dreamed that I would have met and uh, opportunities that flowed from there. Okay, so the first thing is the quotations for contemplations. And that's how I always end every episode. The second one was, just as important. I end every episode with a variation on this statement. It is, I hope that helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Now that's really important and meaningful to me because it's essentially the golden rule applied to leadership. And, and that's what I want. I want to follow the kind of leader that I would want to follow. I want to be the kind of leader that I would want to follow. And I hope that that helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Every episode helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. And if it does, then I've been successful at my task in podcasting. So, you know, I hope I'm better this time next year than I was over the past year. I hope that um, you'll listen and ride along and listen to some of these past episodes and that you'll join me. Let me know what you think about this episode as well. And not just this episode, but what you'd want me to talk about. As long as it's relating to leadership, it's fair game. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon.